as we get set here in the challenge series for the beginning of D tier 16 round championship so we'll be back to the correct four races per episode the final episode should be a pretty lengthy one almost every track is five laps or six laps except for the kind of road based courses which are all on the long circuits and are still three laps so those might be some of the longest races still is those those laps can run the average car about three and a half minutes so <clears throat> So look down the starting grid. We have Cam making another return. This time he's in an Audi TTRS Cup car. Eric is back, this time in a Ferrari 458. Wayne Hansen makes his debut. He drives a Lamborghini Gallardo Super Leggera. Taylor is back, this time in a Lotus 211 GT4. Yoshiro returns, now in a GT4 spec Maserati Gran Turismo. Ryan Wolf now is here in a McLaren MP4-12C. Dedrick is in a Porsche Cayman GT4. Thomas has returned in a Ford GT40. Thrasher, the, champ the champion of C-tier, is also in the same car. Both keeping their vehicles from the previous tier because, you know, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Then again, Riley learned the hard way that sometimes it can be broken and it just doesn't look like it yet. Then we have Travis joining Dedrick and yet another Porsche. James still sticking to his Nissan GTR. Same thing with Hikari. Another new driver, Carly Watts, is going to join Thrasher and Thomas in the Ford GT40. Isabella is, of course, back in another Lotus, another 211 with Taylor. And finally, Stephanie Kaiser, one of Thrasher's buddies, to kind of replace the fact that Akira could not show up for this one, is driving a third Porsche Cayman. <clears throat> we can kind of look at the schedule. We'll have one of the road races in this episode. We've also got some classic tracks introduced, classic Silverstone, and the penultimate race is classic Monza road course. So those should be interesting to watch. But first, we start at Imola. We're here on the starting grid for Imola. Yoshiro will be a uh, Granted pole position on her return for the first time, I think, since literally Tier A. Then we have Ryan behind her and pretty much polar opposite cars, yet starting on the same row of the grid. Two Lotus 211s will start next to each other, as will two of the Porsche Caymans. And the two GTRs will also start on their side. What the heck? So the two GT40s start together, the two Nissans start together, the two Caymans start to two of them anyway. The third one is two places back, and then the two Lotuses start together. This is rigged, dude. So this tier is definitely going to ask the ultimate question of power versus cornering. Is we've got uh, high-end sports cars like this McLaren 12C going up against, you know, GT cars like this Maserati. Though typically I think power wins in this scenario, at least when it's an AI driver. They'll all run similar lap times, but the Maserati's never going to be able to pass the McLaren because of this. So... For the slower vehicles, it is just generally a case of starting grid luck.
This is Wayne Hansen's debut, and he's already... He has a reputation outside of this championship of... A driver who drives Lamborghinis, but acts like he's driving Hondas. He's got a very aggressive flair to his driving style, and... Can end up with uh, very expensive results. But it can also lead in fast lap times, so it's a give and take, as ever. What happened here? Imola is always a weird one. Isabella and Travis are both out of the race, and I am not sure what has happened. I think I have a guess. <laughs> Travis just hit way too much <laughs> curb and spun Isabella right out. Also, we saw Eric taking to the sand, but he kept the car moving forward. Neither of them could do so, and they got stuck in the gravel. So that's quite the start to the championship. We've already got two DNFs and not even one lap of racing. Yeah, Yoshiro has been able to keep on the McLaren, however, uh, that's all gonna go away right here because that thing's got like twice as much power as this GT4 car. Her handling should enable her to keep second though. But truth be told, I think this is gonna be between Wayne, Ryan, the GTRs, and the Fords. Unless a lot of starting grid conniptions occur and, like, Isabella or Taylor get a lot of, like, top three starting positions, I don't think that's gonna change. I truthfully believe that Wayne and Ryan have the best cars. Overall. A Lotus can hold on to a position really well, as we've seen in the past, they have good handling to keep positions through corners, but they don't have the top speed to, like, you know, go on the offensive. And it's kind of the sad fact of AI driving. Unless there's a crash, there's no way Taylor gets seventh. Or never, there's no way she'll take it from James there. We need Thrasher gets somebody along the way, no, no way of knowing who. Eric can also do well in the 458. He just kind of has to start a little bit higher than 12th. And this is a conga line here. I think I know who Thrasher hit. The TTRS has good handling and not a terrible top speed. The only problem is its short gears make it very slow accelerating. Not to mention it's also front wheel drive. Here's the ultimate duel in top speed between a GT40 and Wayne's Gallardo. I get to see just what I mean when I say that this thing might be the best car in the tier. Wayne hits a lot of the curb there, and Chloe might hold the position, but I'm not really holding my breath. And they both barely keep it on the racetrack. Taylor actually does end up trying to get around James here. I don't know how what happened there. I guess just, uh, the universe conspires to make a liar out of me, I suppose. James is going to concede for the moment.
Also, this car sounds really weird when it shifts up. <gasps> Wayne might not even have enough time to reach Yoshiro. He might only be able to get it third. Probably also lost out to Hikari at some point. And Tara just kind of put her car in the middle of the racetrack, and, and the AI of James here just didn't really know what to do with it. So he just kind of freaked out and didn't do anything. Enough. Travis had actually remarked saying that this reminded him of his father's old car. I do kind of see it, but... At the same time, that thing had a McLaren F1 engine in it, so... This engine is nowhere near that powerful. If she was actually still keeping Ryan in her line of sight. On this level, we'll get to see the actual, like, maximum pace of this Lamborghini. He could no cars to pass, so we'll see how much slower or faster he is from the top two running in the minute 56s on a very good lap. Now it is Thomas at the head of the train. As, uh, yeah, he's right on pace with those three, but he's actually still a bit slower than the Maserati car. You know, everybody else is lapping in kind of the two minute realm. So, well, apparently Carly's not, but I think just about everybody, yeah, just about everybody else is running the same lap time because they're all running whatever Thomas is running. So. Thrasher and Eric go too wide. That's not gonna get Eric any higher. Dedrick's car may have possibly the weirdest color scheme I've seen in a while. Black, dark green, and yellow. What are we, John Deere? Ryan Wolf had only the mild horsepower ratings and aerodynamics of this GT4 car for company. But numerically and logically, like logistically, the win was just never there for Yoshiro. It would have taken somebody like Wayne to get there for that to be uh, put to a stop. And he just had so much traffic to get there. Wayne will round out the podium. Hikari will finish in fourth. And running a minute 59 lap. Thus kind of proving the Nissans aren't quite obsolete yet. Which should mean that the four GT40... The four GT40s, rather, should also be... Should also remain competitive. Yeah, obviously the points are kind of a no-duh situation. It's just the brace results. And on to the Nürburgring GP circuit. And we arrived at the starting grid 
for the GP circuit of Nürburgring. My my brain was just not sure how to structure that sentence, but at any rate, uh, yeah, Nismo's kind of got screwed in this one. Despite Hikari's best efforts to keep it looking, you know, relevant in the previous race, now he gets to start 14th. And things looking pretty solid for Ryan, as, well, Yoshiro starts ahead of him, but not by much. And very far down is Wayne Hansen. So... Of course, the lower power of a GT4 car means it'll be nice and consistent and predictable off of the jump, but I think... Oh, that's Isabella on the outside. I thought it was Ryan. No. So Stephanie on the outside, kind of... Yep, yeah, there she is, sticking her uh, Porsche right in there and... Gaining a place. So Ryan... Actually down, unexpectedly. Wayne has also gotten nowhere so far. The race is still young. We're gonna have five laps. This may be almost a ten minute race. James just got caught sleeping out of that corner and the car will just take off with it. Almost first session all mine is Cam fighting with Eric. Now suddenly he's ahead of Ryan who's been thrown off completely by whatever line he just took. And Alec, or Eric is going to also take advantage. I almost called him his dad's name. He would not be happy with me after that. I mean, due to the fact that his dad has passed in a racing accident not very long ago. Eric will now try, try against Cam, but in probably the most unorthodox place to try. Bedrick is just getting away. Thomas had nothing for him off the start or after the start. Isabel is already up to third from fifth. Maybe this is a handling track and I just never knew. Oh wow, that 211 is really not losing much ground on the GT40. I thought they would be faster than- oh my good lord. Okay, maybe I had the wrong read on this championship. Now here comes Carly to sending it on Ryan. He's just... He's off kilter right now, and I think the entire grid's noticed. And that rough exit for Isabella is going to get Thomas a little bit of breathing room, but not too much. Perhaps we're still kind of in the mix. And Stephanie has gained herself a few places from starting. Cam is certainly holding on better than he did before. Nope, a little bit of a nudge from Eric. I think he just panicked. Cam is probably used to getting little tiny bumps from all of his uh, open lobby F1 experience. Wayne up only a singular place after passing Taylor. Nowhere to go right now as Carly and Travis are currently door to door. Cam and Yoshiro battling. Eric just kind of has to sit and wait. You should go to Yoshiro. She's got the inside lane, though. Or not. Cam just heroically kept his car there, and Eric has to do yet more waiting. Is it settled now? Possibly, I think so. Took a few corners longer than I had anticipated it to take to figure it out. Isabella is right on the old man's heels and probably pretty far into his head by now too, I have to guess. 
We're looking at kind of a repeat of a uh, repeat of events here from this in the last lap. As the villa again just kind of waits. She can't wait forever though. Eventually, she just has to take an opportunity when it presents itself, and they will present themselves because the GT40 has got some really shaky handling. Now in the GT40s might be the position of like the opposite where they lack the handling but they've got the power to keep their position. Whereas previously you needed like handling to hold on to a spot, now you don't. Also, Dedrick is out of here. Thomas is nothing on this track. This is his home track, after all, I suppose, so maybe that you just add some extra practice at this course. Because he's running 8 seconds a lap faster than every other car on the track. Probably mostly because Thomas is just kind of holding on to second. And, like, nobody can get around him. But it's making for close fighting as Travis now gets around Cam for 8th place. And he's right behind his uh, lifetime buddy there in 7th. And well, behind that, Wayne will try to pass Carly. He will be as of yet unsuccessful. I was expecting a dive bomb from him, but no. There was no such production. Shearer got rocked on the exit of that corner and almost got passed by the Ferrari as a result, but nothing doing there either. The downforce just barely enough to keep her ahead. Isabella still kind of lying in wait in pretty much the exact same circumstances that we saw her in at the end of the previous lap. Like, this is, this is literally the exact same position she was in, and she'll probably still not do anything with it. Yep, she's just gonna let off. Scared to take the opportunity. She's got more cornering. I don't know why she doesn't try, but... Saw some weird stuff happening back here. Cam has been overtaken by Ryan. Isabella's wide exit to try and make a different line from Thomas keeps giving Thomas all the distance he needs to keep the place into one and the vicious cycle will continue until the race is finally over. There is no hope for this one and Dedrick is literally in the next sector of the track. <laughs> all because Thomas just refuses to take a hint. Nor does Isabella though for that matter so I don't really know if I can blame Thomas as much as I just blame Isabella for just not passing him. It's not a difficult thing to do. Ryan trying to retake eighth, but he might actually just lose ninth to Cam if he's not careful. <laughs> Acceleration is gonna keep that from happening. He is very off kilter. Cam would be miles ahead by this point if he didn't have like 600 horses in this car. Cause Ryan is just not driving like himself. Considering he's also like got home turf advantage at this track, I would really would have expected him to do better, but maybe he prefers the Hockenheim ring. Unfortunately for him, that's not in this game. That's Project Cars 2 you're looking for. Deja vu! She's just been in this place before. And just a gigantic train. The other GT4 cars don't even have to let off for that corner, but Isabella does because she's stuck behind Thomas and won't take the hint. At some point, yeah, now you're just gonna pay for it because here comes Thrasher who actually decides he wants to try and pass somebody. As bold of an idea as that is for these AI today. A 
It might actually have been what Isabella needed though, because being further away didn't cause her AI to take the weird line out of the final turn. But at the same time, the game is having some problems. What is happening? Okay, that would be what happened. All right, back to normal. Travis is in yet another accident. And do I even dare to try and see what caused that? Or do I fear my game is going to crash? Tries overtaking into this corner, that's usually not a good idea. You failed! Oh, barely nicks that, bounces off a Stephanie, and traffic is obstructed, and he doesn't know how to reverse. Because the AI today are feeling really remedial. Well, that's pretty much sealed the result of this race, as Isabella could not be any closer to that Ford. Finally, I think the desperation is beginning to set in for her as she realizes, Oh yeah, I've sat here for three laps and done nothing about the fact that I'm obviously faster. As now Carly has got herself to sixth place, she just drove around that expertly and made herself up, what, seven places? Something like that? Actually, I think it's like five, but still. A lot of places. James will take 8th and Hikari will take 10th, most likely. And Isabella still finds herself in the exact same position. I don't think she'll try anything differently. She is... She's caught in a time loop, but we're not even in that series anymore. This is something completely different, Isabella. Please get your head out of the freaking gutter. No, okay. Gosh, can you please just dive this moron? Thank you. All the way in. It still didn't even work because honestly, chicanes aren't even passing zones if they're that tight. Oh, now Isabella's gonna hit it. But uh, because Thrush is not totally alongside, there will be no repercussions. What is the victor's. 43 second margin of victory. I don't really know if that's Dedrick being really fast, or if that's Thomas just being unbelievably slow. I really don't feel like he deserved second at all, but Isabella, in my mind, didn't deserve third either, so that was just an utter mess of a race. This cam is, well, last of the vehicles that'll finish the race, but... Not for a lack of trying. Though he did start in 8th and finish in 13th, so it's... Really hard to say much positive on his... On his championship this far. Thomas is the point... Oh my god! Well, technically he's tied with Ryan, but like... He shouldn't even be there! You shouldn't have gotten a second at all! But the AI just don't know how to pass around the track that has, like, four different passing zones. I don't understand. Ah! I'm Brant's Hatch before my head explodes. Of oh, Brant's Hatch. A lot of questions to be asked. Who will win the race? Will Isabella pass somebody? Will Travis finish the race this time? Will Ryan or Travis or Thomas be the points leader? I don't know. Cam is on pole, and Dead Trick is looking in a prime position to do that again, unless you know somebody pulls their head out of their behind and actually you know drives appropriately and actually makes him have to try and win. Uh, 
Well, uh, front wheel drive, do you believe, means, yeah, uh, Dead Drake is out of here. No, I'm getting deja vu all over again, except instead of Thomas, it's Cam. Isabella is, well, clearly already impatient. Ryan and Thomas effectively started next to each other. And well, now they just straight up are next to each other. This is about a good start, but Taylor lost two places before the green flag. Or at the green flag, not before. That wouldn't make any sense. Here goes Isabella. And... Still can't do it, but no, you know, not for lack of trying this time. You know, this time it's just because Cam turned correctly and drove correctly. Travis's car seems to have a few suspension problems. It's very bouncy. I mean, yeah, this track isn't exactly a flat course, but still, it isn't normally that much. Thing is, this track is also kind of built for front-wheel drive. It has a lot of touring car races here, and they're all, for the most part, front-wheel drive. So, a vehicle like Cam's, which is literally built for this track, should have not too many issues. This grind just breezes right around the Hikari, and there's nothing Hikari will do about it. Not much he really could do, for that matter. Thomas will instead be passed by Travis. Her upshift noise is so weird. It literally sounds like somebody just messing with one of those rubber door stops. Dedrick, if the race proceeds as is, I think would be the first person in Shown series so far to uh, win back-to-back -back races. He doesn't even have the home track advantage this time. This is UK. I don't think there's any British drivers in here. There is one British driver in challenge series named June. However, uh, her vehicle choice, Aston Martin, isn't present in this game. And as that, and as a matter of fact, the only British cars that are are Lotus. There's no TVR. There's no Aston Martin. There's no like Caterham. There's no. Well, there's McLaren actually. That's British, right? I'm stupid. So yeah, there's Lotus and there's McLaren. There's no Aston Martin, no TVR, no Caterham, no, like, Austin Healey, no Mini Coopers. So... And June likes a little bit of size in her car, so those two things wouldn't fit her very well. The camera's just kind of feeling it here at Brands Hatch. Taylor's up to sick. What? These should just mess around with each other so much that they ended up just giving her the spot.
very processional vibes I'm getting right now. Ryan is getting closer to Wayne, so this will be an interesting battle. This will be a a fight like, with uh, raw horsepower versus more raw horsepower. What am I seeing up there? That almost looked like it was gonna go three wide for a second, then it just sort of didn't. And it's like that, I assumed the previous right-hander. Uh, Wayne just went right by Ryan. No, wait, I'm dumb. Uh, Wayne was never behind Ryan to begin with. I, I just looked at these two, like, 30 seconds ago, and I already forgot what order they were running in. I am a genius. Brain sort of kind of zoning out there for most of that lap, so it's my excuse. It's not a valid excuse, but it's the one I'm going with. Not quite as dominant this time, but Dedrick is still very far ahead as we hit the final lap of the race. Ryan might be in striking distance going down the back straightaway. Porsche drivers always get very competitive against each other. Even though Dedrick prefers TVRs, if he can't have a Volkswagen. But, you know, Porsches are under the VW group, so he's just like, ah, close enough. Hmm. <sighs> Like, I reckon because I didn't see a split time by James's name, and I thought that he'd DNF, because that's what typically happens. And when somebody, like, retires to the pit lane. Ryan had nothing for Wayne. And as he reaches the last turn, Dedrick is going to get repeat victories. First at Ring. And now, Brands Hatch. And he will definitely be the points leader after that one. Cam will take a spectacular second. And what I thought might have been the worst car in the category. And he didn't even have any competition for it. He just drove himself away from everybody else. Taylor salvages sixth from her poor race start. Stephanie managed to steal... The Porsche drivers managed to steal 7th and 8th from Hikari. But a, a forgettable race to say the least for him, I think. Yeah, 5th to 9th. And Thrasher will take the last point home. Yeah, it is 8 points between Ryan and Dedrick. At this point, only 5 drivers are within a race win's worth of points. From Dedrick, that is how. I mean, he only got tenth in round one, and then he got first, and then first again. Eric, surprisingly, is the only driver with no points, which I thought he had a very good car. It had the same kind of power rating as the 12C or the Gallardo, but I guess he just not had the luck on the starting grids. On to what should be a bit of a, a wrench in the works, especially for the handling-based cars. We have the long desert highway stretches of the long black cat county circuit well uh that'll be an opportunity for eric to turn it around he scored zero points but now he starts on pole position and considering this is definitely a top speed based track uh he should have no problems walking away with the win on this one or at the very least a top three considering the only vehicles near him with good horsepower are thomas and hikari Ryan might get near, but I'm not sure. The game put kind of the medium to handling cars near the front for the most part. I mean, there's a lot of handling cars in this tier. 
as uh, there's only really like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, may arguably eight drivers that argue one that or that like rely on their power, and even then the GT40s are kind of low on that aspect compared to the modern opponents that they're facing in that category. So it could arguably be five, and then the GT40s are kind of in the middle with the, uh, with, I guess, kind of the, sort of the 211. Actually, it might be the middle with the Cayman, the 211's not really like that, but anyway. Into the race. There's the all-wheel drive launch of the GTR, rocketing Hikari up two consecutive places. It would appear the Porsche cars aren't the greatest off the line, well, unless your name is Dedrick Schwartz, in which case he's already up a couple of places from the start. And, yeah, well, two. I thought it was only one, but no, he's up two already. I don't know how that's happened, but it has. Maybe just the camera, I don't know, but the Porsches really seem like they're bouncing a lot. As now Dedrick is going to try and pass Thomas for third. He will succeed pretty easily. Wayne's also already up two places. One of those places being Brian, who I thought would be his, like, some of his stiffer competition here along with Eric and and, uh... Nah, Eric and Ryan and kind of Hikari, but no. Nope. I mean, Ryan's getting momentum going again now, but... The car barely stays on the ground for that right hand- for that, uh, for those two corners. The long circuit of this location is... Very much a desert roller coaster ride, if you ask me. He's got the run on, and on a uh, on Hanson. Barely avoids the guardrail, and now we come back to what would have been the first corner of the original version. James had an issue. I saw on the map somebody went off a little bit and I didn't know who it was. I was trying to figure it out. Well, this is probably why. He's in a giant cluster of GT4 style cars. And gets creamed by Thrasher. We've done a bit of a body count lately. It's not the first person he's wrecked. But now we reach what would be the first corner of the normal, uh, the, you know, the standard layout of Black Hat County. And I think it is just the normal layout from this point onward. Yeah, Cam's low top speed is really going to be kicking him in the butt here. Because you need top speed to even compete at this track. Same goes for the Highlands. Shiro just cuts Wayne off. Cam had momentum, but there's not much you can do with it against the Lamborghini. Isabella is uh, on the taillights of the Nissan, but can she do anything with that? Meanwhile, Dedrick is somehow pressuring Eric for the lead, or at least he will be soon. I really underestimated the handling of this car, and it's not as bad in a straight line as its other, like, other GT4 counterparts are, so this may be the perfect balance option for the category, which then begs the question, why aren't the other ones in it doing better? 
Well, the simple answer is because Travis keeps crashing, but Ace should be doing fine. She's a Porsche test driver, for crying out loud. She's gonna try and get into the points positions. I think she just about will. So she's not doing nothing, per se, but she's not doing too much. There's a gaggle of GT4 cars following the Lamborghini. <laughs> he didn't know where to go there. Thomas is being overcome very frequently. That's the wall. Oh, that's that damn number 76. This camera's gonna block Carly right off. They're three wide. Cam doesn't give Carly any bit of room. And here comes Dedrick for the lead once again. Obviously, the Porsche isn't unfair because the Caymans aren't exactly running away with the championship so far. So I'm really not sure what is in Dedrick right now, but he is on the drive of his life this championship. Here comes the horsepower of the Ferrari. It's not going to be over that easily. Dedrick is going to get into Eric. Dedrick has... Most has got a reputation of aggression. Uh, several vehicular felonies and various infractions. So he's obviously not against, you know, bizarre actions. Or bizarre and, in some cases, illicit actions to get what he wants. So no doubt he's not beyond running somebody off the road for a place. Sikari has been deposited. I don't know what happened to him, but he is... He's had a lap to forget. Honestly, I kind of want to see how he got passed by GT4 cars. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Wayne stuck his bumper there, and he couldn't go down all the way, so he got passed by him there. That's... yeah. He just got kind of outpowered by the McLaren, I assume. Yeah, it looks like uh, Wolf takes him on the outside here almost. No, he back he crossovers. That's what he does. He just throws himself right in there. Not enough top speed to keep with those cars. The handling lets Stephanie take that corner at a higher speed, and that opens the door for the Maserati to follow through. See, Hikari's had a lap to forget here. He's down four places from where he started the lap. As we look back now to the front of the grid, as uh, Dedrick is still right on Eric's heels. This is definitely the ultimate argument of power versus cornering. Typically, power wins, but the GT4 cars have shown to have some unusual agility through some of these turns that I wouldn't even fathom happening. <laughs> Ugh. Thomas is no longer sick, that's for sure. Seems most cars in this race have a little bit of body damage. Lots of kind of uh, yellow body panels. Hmm.
cam has now been put back into last. His weak horsepower doing him no favors. Dietrich tried to send it, but the door was closed. <laughs> Nothing really seems to be happening too majorly through the hairpins. As Travis is dividing the four GTs. Eric is going to escape Dedrick for now. Stephanie is a fast car. Well, I guess I did ask why they weren't doing better. I guess Stephanie heard me and was like, okay, faster I shall go, and now we'll catch what I thought would be the two fastest cars in the tier. They've been high on the leaderboards a lot of races, but they haven't actually really won since the first round, and they've been fighting each other more often than anything else. If my dog loses his mind, again. Daily occurrence, believe me. I'm not really sure if he has a mind at this point to lose, but here we are. Ryan's gonna send it on Wayne. Wayne put himself just about in the sand. Same goes for Wolf. He's gonna be dead even if they come off this bridge jump. Well, that would be a shot right there. more collisions between Dedrick and Eric as they continue to battle for the lead. I mean, you can sit out there all you want, Dedrick. That's a lot more horsepower in that Ferrari than you've got access to. Uh, this one's definitely just the uneven road. He's gonna set it on the outside, but he's gonna check it out. The dead even coming out of that turn. But you might still have a, a splitter in there as we get to the next turn. He will. And he's just gonna throw himself right in there. We'll just jump into it. Meanwhile, Isabella clearly turned on cruise control for a bit too long, and now Ryan is going to be her next contender. Wayne, meanwhile, has kind of been left behind, and Eno has to contend with the GT4 pack of Stephanie and Yoshiro. Yoshiro just has a lapse of judgment or something there, I'm not really sure. She about goes straight into a wall. Dedrick might just be running away with this one now. We're out of many straightaways for Eric to use to stay with him. We've got one more big straight after this, but there's still corners. And then there's a bunch of hairpins, which I would imagine the force would be better at those. However, there is one more straightaway for Ryan to get ever closer to Isabella. The immense power of this McLaren. To get right on her diffuser. Will he do anything with it? No, because there's a corner there, technically. I think Dedrick's got this race won, so it's now the battle for the podium spot. Isabella should have better handling. She'll keep the uh, she'll keep ahead into the second hairpin. Ryan doesn't try anything desperate. While well, behind there, Wayne should. Hold on to fifth, I think. Both of them just got closer to Eric, too. If this were another lap, this could have been battle for second, but then Dedrick would have gotten miles away. So perhaps it's better in that it's not that way. Eric will remain second despite all the scratch this car. Ryan, with nothing to do against the Lotus, will take fourth. Your shoe really hit a wall somewhere. I think she looks like she locked up too. 
and finish races, finishes the race with the first example of suspension damage in this championship. Travis stole the last point from Thomas, and Cam is some ways back last once again. Cam is clearly the new Natsuki as we look at the points, even though I already know who's leading them. Yeah, a full race ahead, Dedrick is ahead of anyone. Even if he didn't score at Barcelona next episode and Ryan won the race, they'd just be tied. Everyone does have points now. And that will conclude this episode of Tier D. <sighs> Next we'll have Barcelona, two different versions of Silverstone, and Mugello for the second time in the series. That is obviously not period. Or not in this, you know, whatever.